You are ready for the African Revolution. We will move forward with the Nkosi Sikilele Ya Africa. Let every voice and sing. Then you will have the great cardinal of this great sacred center come and speak before us. Then we'll have great leaders like Professor James Small, Ilonga Brack, Dr. Sheridan Lewis, Ilonga Brack, and we have our great Charles Barron here from New York. All the way from New York, Councilman Charles Barron. And he told me to do this, by the way. I don't know how much he's gonna give me. <laughs> but we need an army of Africans who are ready to go to New York and make sure this man is selected as the next major Pan-African congressional leader in DC. Give him some love. We need an army. We need an army of Africans. And I said, you know what, I have to pay him just to say that, by the way, because he needs the money. <laughs> He's going to need the money. Brothers and sisters, Brother Kofi, please. This great African said he's ready for the African Revolution. Always ready. Please rise, everyone, for the Pan African anthem and prayer in Kosi Sisikilele, Africa, under the direction of Brother Kofi. Everybody, raise your right first. Forward, Africa, ever. Backward, never. We're going to sing the national anthem of the African Union. Uh, this song is in the language of the Azania, South Africa. If you know it, you can sing along. If you don't know it, just raise up your fist in support of Mother Africa. <speaking in Spanish>
The only reason why we're going to have victory is because we love each other so much. I need you to ex just extend yourself to your left and right and tell your brothers and sisters how much you love them right now. Please do that. That's right. That's right. That's the only way we're going to get this great victory. That's right. I love you. Love you. Love you. <laughs> African heart, my brother said. That's right. The greatest love of all. The greatest heart. <clears throat> you brothers are looking at those sisters. That's the reason why they talk. Well, brother, you're doing a great job. <laughs> brothers and sisters, we're going to bring to you now Cardinal Mbwai Chui. I just want to say that the first time I spoke with this brother, it was just a love affair. That's right, brother. Brother loves Mama Africa. Anybody who loves Mama Africa, I honor them. Come on, African man. In the name of our Creator, revealed to all, known by many names, the reason for our being, uh, I greet you on behalf of the officers and the members of the Shrines of the Black Madonna of the Pan African Orthodox Christian Church here at Shrine 9 in Atlanta, Georgia. Right up the road at the Beulah Christian Center, Shrine number 20 in Calhoun Falls, South Carolina, Abbeville County. And a little further up northeast to the Mother Shrine number 1, Detroit, Michigan. And all the way down to the southwest region in Houston, Texas, Shrine number 10. We welcome you. Our doors are always open, have been for 53 years to every black community organization that is pro-African. So we welcome you. You are at home. Uh, about 53 years ago, our beloved founder, the Honorable Jeremiah Bebe Ajima, had a vision of a new black church with a new direction, uh, one that supported our heroic struggle for freedom and liberation, which is the same struggle that Jesus, the revolutionary black Messiah, engaged in 2,000 years ago. Uh, his vision was that we could bring a structure and discipline and program and process to the black church that would make it an instrument of empowerment for African people here in America. And so for 53 years, we've been committed to that vision. It started out in Detroit, Michigan, and we spread across uh, Detroit, went to five shrines, and we went up to Flint, to Kalamazoo. And then we, in 1972, launched a national campaign. Uh, we brought the shrine here to Atlanta, Georgia in 1974. It was a group of about eight or 10 college students. Um, one of those students who came down in 1974. This was the old theater uh, when we got here. And, uh, but we were committed to building a church. And so we worked and we struggled and we built a church uh, from the ground up. Uh, but that struggle uh, to, to expand the gospel of liberation that our beloved founder uh, put together is an ongoing mission that we have been committed to in 1978, after we moved to Houston, Texas, uh, Reverend Clay decided to expand the, the purpose and the mission of the church. And he incorporated Pan-African Orthodox Christian Church to the name Shrines of the Black Madonna. And that was to solidify our African mission. Uh, and since that time, we've been working in various ways to set the foundation uh, for the Renaissance of Africa. Africa is depending on us, calling on us uh, to be involved in its uh, rebirth and
and renaissance. And we can't do that until we get ourselves together here. We don't know that they're depending on us, that they're waiting for us, uh, because when we took that hero journey 500 years ago, it was so that we could discover ourselves and bring the gift of self-awareness back home. Uh, and so they're still waiting. Africa is still calling us to come home. Uh, but we can't go home until we know who we are and what we're supposed to be doing. And so our mission for 53 years has been to change the minds of our people. Uh, change the mind. We have to change the slave mind to a free mind. It takes a lot of work because we've been conditioned. For 450 years we've been conditioned not to believe in ourselves, not to celebrate who we are, not to believe in our history and our culture. But we took that mission on and we have been in every community that we are in, we have built an alternative lifestyle value system culture. Uh, that black people can become a part of and get connected to. We become a source of stability in every black community that we have gone into. And we, we have tried to build the kind of model uh, that other black churches can emulate. In 1981, uh, Jeremoji Baby Algeman said we need to have some land. We need to have a place where we can uh, have all the institutional mechanisms we need to feed, clothe, house, and do all the things an independent group of people ought to be able to do for ourselves, employ ourselves, manufacture products, goods, services, do all those things. We need a place uh, to do that. And so in 1981, we began to practice communal service economics. We began to practice Ujima, not that we hadn't been practicing it before, but in a very practical way. We began to practice Kuji Chagali and all the things we celebrate in Kwan. We began to practice those things. If we can pool our time, our energy, and our resources together, we can build anything that we decide to build. And so the vision of having a place that we can call our own, that we can create that kind of model alternative, uh, we call Beulah Land. Yes, sir. We worked from 1981 all the way up until 1999 to raise the capital that we needed to purchase 5,000 acres of prime land here in the U.S. And in 1999, we purchased Beulah land in Abbeville County, South Carolina. Yes. At the time that purchased, it was not the 5,000 acres that we had initially envisioned. It was only 2,800 acres. That's all the man wanted to sell us at the time. There were 5,000 acres there, but he wasn't willing to let it, let it go. But when you're on a mission and God is in charge, uh, it's just a matter of time when things line up for you. And so we kept pursuing that. And just two months ago, we celebrated the acquisition of an additional 1,200, 12, what am I saying? 1,200 1, acres of land. So we now have 4,200 acres of land. One of the visions of Uniland is to create the kind of uh, partnership, network, communications network, uh, educational, cultural, political network, economic network that we need to establish with our African brothers and sisters on the continent. And so we've already begun to move in ways to do that. In, 19, in 2000, uh, 2001, we established the Pan-African Ministries Department of the Pan-African Orthodox Christian Church. And, I was sent to, uh, to Benin, West Africa. I went to Benin and uh, met with an international organization called Pan-Africa. Pan-Africa was born out of the Seventh World Pan-African Congress that was held in Cotonou, Benin in 1991. And basically that organization works for the unification of African people across uh, geographical lines, across religious lines, across tribal lines, and all that. And uh, I began to set up a partnership with that organization, and we began to work collectively to do some of those things that were part of our founders' vision. So we've been working in Africa, in Benin, in Burkina Faso, in Nigeria, in Togo, in Ghana, and all those places, trying to build the kind of uh, alliances that are essential to doing what we're trying to do. Three of the, the main focuses of the Pan-African Ministries Department, number one is to build the, the kind of cultural exchange that we need. 
So through all of our shrine bookstores and culture centers in Atlanta, Houston, and Detroit, when our brothers and sisters come, they have a home, a place not only to come and perform or to share their wares or whatever, but also to, to be connected and to engage in a cultural exchange that can facilitate the kind of uh, practical partnerships that we need to establish with one another. One of the other aims of the Pan-African Ministries Department is to spread the gospel of liberation. In 1972, our founder wrote Black Messiah and Black Christian Nationalism, which reconnected Christianity to its African roots. For 53 years, we have seen the synthesis of uh, all of our traditional religious systems and Christianity. For us, it's all one. We created all of it, it's all our stuff. So we don't have to decide this one, we don't need that, we have to throw it, it's all ours. All religion, all major religion is based on traditional African religious system. All the mythology, all of the symbolism, it's all our stuff. So we incorporate that into our Christian faith. And so if you worship with us, you, you notice that we have traditional African traditions, symbolism, uh, ritual is all a part of what we do. We need to spread that to our motherland because in our motherland there are many, many African people who are giving up their tradition yeah. for the westernized version of Christianity that has kept us enslaved for 500 years. We have to spread the gospel of black liberation through the historic roots of Christianity. And so that's also part of our mission. The third part of our mission has to do with economic development. We see view land not only as a resource for African Americans, but also for Africans abroad. And so we are establishing trade and economic uh, networks with different agencies. Uh, one of the groups that we're working with is called the Alabama Benin Incorporated. The last uh, ship that left the shores of West Africa, left from the coast of Benin from a little city called Weedah. That ship landed in 1896 in uh, Mobile, Alabama. And so the descendants from that ship called the Clotilda are the residents of Alabama. A lot of Alabamians are been in East, but they don't know it. Uh, and so for 10 years, we've been working with that agency to, uh, to get legislation passed, number one, to make uh, Mobile, more specifically Pritchard, and uh, the little town that the descendants of Clotilda formalized, which is called Africa Town, uh, a part of the historic movement to build an economic center, a cultural center, a social center there in Mobile, Alabama, uh, to unite Alabama, black folks in Alabama with black folks in Benin. So we've been working on that project, and several other projects, I don't want to go into all of them in terms of the trade uh, that we can do if we have a mind to do it uh, with our brothers and sisters. So there are some brochures uh, that are available for you that talk about the Pan-African Ministries and what we're trying to do. But I just want to take a few moments to share with you the, the mission and the vision that uh, we share here in the Pan-African Orthodox Christian Church with all other Africans who are trying to bring about the empowerment and the unification of our people. Thank you. Please, brothers and sisters, give this great visionary some more love. This church, an African Orthodox Christian church, will move to another level with this type of visionary leadership. Give him some more love. Give him some more love. Visionary. The God is vision. The Bishop Matthew Turner's vision. The Reverend Hyman Gordon's vision. That's right. That's right. A visionary leader. That's what we need in this movement. The reason why we're here also at the Shrine of the Black Madonna is because they own this property. Give them some love. They own this joint. That's right. They own it. I'm big on ownership. I tell my 
time, well, I don't even want to buy a house in America. It's a rip-off. <laughs> that go to Africa. And buy four That's houses. right. But if you can get a little piece of Africa right here, be like the shrine of the Black Madonna. Give them some love. That's right. They own it. And that's the reason why we are here, to make sure that we have total ownership over everything that belongs to us, especially Africa. That's right. And this is a great example. You have to use models. You get a little piece here, you get another one. Let's keep going. Till you get all of Africa. Come on, Dad. <laughs> and now, my great leader, Brother Charles Barron. Come on, up, brother. Come on, man. Black Panther Party. Revolutionary. Nationalist. Oh, boy, he said, calm down. No, 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 no. Send him up, he said. <laughs> but I'm trying to compensate, brother. He told me when I was leaving New York, but I can't believe you didn't leave it. I needed to work for my mayor, for my mayorship in New York. Why are you going to leave me like this? But so, brother, I'm going to work hard for this Congress position. Okay, African man. <laughs> Give me some love. Come on. My brother got a whole lot of love. We've been giving up a lot of love these last few days, man. <laughs> We're going to keep giving it up. Give him some love. Give him a big hand. Man. He's doing a great job. He's a great job keeping all these egos together and having us move forward. He's doing a great job with him, man. I just uh, truly want to thank uh, some friends of mine from Atlanta. Uh, Sister Imani and her daughter Malaika. I want to thank you all so much for always uh, treating me well when I come. But you know, I'm excited about life. You know, every day I wake up in the morning and I look in the mirror, I thank God that God made me African. Yeah. I thank God that this is who we are. Just imagine, He made us the first people ever to inhabit the planet. He made us the fathers and mothers of science and math and medicine and every study you could think of. We built the first civilizations known to the human race and chose us as the people in the Bible to give his divine message of liberation and salvation. We are a blessed people. We are a blessed people. Then he told me to go into this dirty, filthy, stinky business of politics. And I said, Lord, are you serious? But you know, politics isn't dirty. People are dirty. Politics is a neutral process for us accessing power, exercising some power. We have to have an inside-outside strategy. Some need to get up on in there, but not Aunt your mamas, not Uncle Toms, not sellouts, not those who are no longer connected to us. And the preacher was saying this morning, y'all need to come to some of these services. They have great services here at the shrine. But you know, people forget their blackness until they get in trouble. Yes. You know, Paul Michael Jackson walking around here like a walking glass of milk. And, but when he got in trouble, he was black.